together. May it then
is the earth and its fullness, the world and those who dwell in it. It is he who set it on the seas, on the waters he made it firm. Grow Subirà alla montagna del Signor, quien estará de pie en su santo recinto, el de manos limpias y de puro corazón, el que no pone su alma en cosas vanas ni jura con engaño. Roja. Blessings from the Lord shall he receive, and right reward from the God who saves him. Such are the people who seek him, who seek the face of the God of Jacob. Grow Puertas, levanten sus dinteles, elevense portones eternos, y que pase el rey de la gloria. Roja. This King of glory, the Lord, the mighty, the valiant, the Lord, the valiant in war. Puertas, levanten sus dinteles, elevense portones eternos, y que pase el rey de la gloria. Roja. The King of glory, He, the Lord of hosts, He is the King of glory. is the earth and its fullness, the world and those who dwell in it. It is he who set it on the seas, on the waters he made it firm. Roha.
Dear brothers and sisters, as we solemnly dedicate this house, let us humbly call upon the Lord our God to bless this water he has created with which we are to be sprinkled as a sign of repentance and a remembrance of baptism, and by which the new walls and altar will be purified. May the Lord support us with his grace so that docile to the Spirit whom we have received, we may remain faithful in his church. O God, through whom every creature comes forth into the light of life, you accompany all people with such great love that not only do you nourish them with fatherly care, but you mercifully cleanse them of their sins with the dew of charity and constantly lead them back to Christ, the head. For in your merciful plan, you established that those who descend as sinners into the sacred waters to die with Christ should rise free from guilt and be made his members heirs with him to an eternal reward. Sanctify, therefore, with your blessing this water you have created that sprinkled on us and on the walls of this church. It may be a sign of the cleansing waters of salvation in which we have been washed in Christ and made a temple of your spirit. Grant that with all our brothers and sisters who will celebrate the divine mysteries in this church, we may come at last to the heavenly Jerusalem through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. salvation and the people sang in joyful praise alleluia
salvation granted and preserved for us in heaven. Alleluia. In this house of prayer and by the grace of the Holy Spirit cleanse us who are the temple where he dwells amen
Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, pour out your grace upon this place and extend the gift of your help to all who call upon you, that the power of your word and of the sacraments may strengthen here the hearts of all the faithful. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. May the word of God resound always in this building to open for you the mystery of Christ and to bring about your salvation in the church. A reading from the book of Nehemiah. Ezra the priest brought the law before the assembly, which consisted of men, women, and children old enough to understand. Standing at one end of the open place that was before the water gate, he read out of the book from daybreak till midday in the presence of the men, the women, and those children old enough to understand. And all the people listened attentively to the book of law. Ezra the scribe stood on a wooden platform that had been made for the occasion. He opened the scroll so that all the people might see it. For he was standing higher up than any of the people. And as he opened it, all the people rose. Ezra blessed the Lord, the great God, and all the people, their hands raised high, answered, Amen, Amen. Then they bowed down and prostrated themselves before the Lord, their faces to the ground. Ezra read plainly from the book of the law of God, interpreting it so that all could understand what was read. Then Nehemiah, that is, His Excellency, and Ezra the priest scribe, and the Levites who were instructing the people, said to all the people, Today is holy to the Lord your God. Do not be sad and do not weep, for all the people were weeping as they heard the words of the law. He said further, go eat rich foods and drink sweet drinks and allot portions to those who had nothing prepared. For today is holy to our Lord. Do not be saddened by this day. For rejoicing in the Lord must be your strength. 
The word of the Lord. Bài trích thư thứ nhất của Thánh Phaolô Tông Đồ gửi tín hữu Corinto. Anh em thân mến, anh em là tòa nhà của Thiên Chúa. Theo ân sủng Thiên Chúa đã ban cho tôi, tôi như một kiến trúc sư lành nghề đã đặt nền móng, còn kẻ khác thì xây lên. Nhưng mỗi người hãy xem coi mình xây lên thế nào Vì chưng không ai có thể xây dựng một nền tảng khác Ngoài nền tảng đã được xây dựng là Đức Kitô. Anh em không biết anh em là đền thờ của Thiên Chúa Và Thánh Thần Thiên Chúa ngự trong anh em sao Nếu ai xúc phạm đến đền thờ của Thiên Chúa thì Thiên Chúa sẽ hủy diệt người ấy. 
vì đền thờ của Thiên Chúa là Thánh, mà chính anh em là đền thờ ấy. Đó là lời Chúa. chosen you and consecrated this house that my name may be there forever says the Lord From the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. When Jesus went into the region of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, Who do people say that the Son of Man is? They replied, Some say John the Baptist, others Elijah, still others Jeremiah or one of the prophets. He said to them, But who do you say that I am? Simon Peter said in reply, You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. Jesus said to him in reply, Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my heavenly Father. And so I say to you, you are Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of the netherworld shall not prevail against it. I will give you the keys to the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. En aquel tiempo, cuando llegó Jesús a la región de Cesarea de Filipo, hizo esta pregunta a sus discípulos. ¿Quién dice la gente que es el Hijo del Hombre? Ellos respondieron, unos dicen que es Juan el Bautista, otros que Elías, otros que Jeremías, o algunos de los profetas. Luego, les preguntó, ¿y ustedes? ¿Quién dice que soy yo? Simón Pedro tomó la palabra y le dijo, Tú eres el Mesías, el Hijo de Dios vivo. Jesús le dijo entonces, Dichoso tú, Simón, hijo de Juan, 
porque esto no te lo ha revelado ningún hombre, sino mi Padre que está en los cielos. Y yo te digo a ti que tú eres Pedro, y sobre esta piedra edificaré mi iglesia. Los poderes del infierno no progresarán sobre ella. Yo te dará las llaves del reino de los cielos. Todo lo que ates en la tierra quedará atado en el cielo, y todo lo que desates en la tierra quedará desatado en el cielo. The Gospel of the Lord. This is indeed the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. What a joy it is to welcome all of you here this beautiful, glorious morning, unlike the days that have preceded when it was windy and cloudy and blustery. This is the day the Lord has made and we indeed are filled with rejoicing and gladness. What a joy to welcome each and every one of you today for making time to be here to celebrate with us what is an historic day for the church in Oklahoma. And I certainly want to begin by acknowledging and extending a uh, sincere welcome to, to all of you, but to some special guests who are part of this assembly today, beginning with Archbishop Christoph Pierre, the Apostolic Nuncio to the United States, representing our Holy Father, Pope Francis. Also my predecessor, Archbishop Eusebius Beltran, whose vi vision and whose conviction, the worth of the cause of Blessed Stanley Rother was worth inaugurating, and he did, and here we are. And also Archbishop Gonzalo Villa, Archbishop of Guatemala City, formerly the, the Bishop of Sololá, Chimaltenango, where Blessed Stanley served and where he endured martyrdom. I'm humbled by the presence of so many of my brother bishops from around the United States as well, who are here with us to, to celebrate. Thank you for making time to join us. Thank you, my brother priests, who are here with us as well. Seminarians, near and far, even from Santiago Atitlan, deacons, consecrated women and men. And of course, many very generous donors, members of the Rother family and extended family. I want to express a word of appreciation and welcome also to our ecumenical leaders who are with us and to many civic leaders who are here also. Thank you for gracing us and with your presence and interest in what we are doing here. There's one person I will mention by name perhaps of the many people uh, who have a particular part to play in what we are In, <clears throat> excuse me, and what we're doing, who is not with us, and that is Mark Ruffin. Mark uh, was a good, faithful Catholic husband, father, businessman in our community, and a developer. And it was Mark who one day approached me knowing that we were in search of a piece of property to build a large church to serve a growing 
Hispanic community in Oklahoma City, and he brought me here to show me a golf course that had become a little long in the tooth over the years, and it was for sale, and he said, Archbishop, if you don't buy it and develop it, I will. So we did again, and here we are. So I want to acknowledge Mark. Mark died of COVID during during the, uh, the pandemic, and uh, we miss him very much. Especially, I'd like to acknowledge the parishioners from Sacred Heart Parish and Holy Angels Parish, who, beginning tomorrow, actually, will begin to make this their parish church and to worship here every day and, and every week. Um, these two parishes are part of a growing Latino community uh, in Oklahoma City, and I want to acknowledge those who are from those parishes and all of our Latino brothers and sisters uh, who are here with us. Están en su casa, bienvenidos a todos. This will be a place of pilgrimage, a place of hospitality for all, and you are all welcome. We hope before you leave today that you will take the time to visit the chapel where Blessed Stanley is entombed, which is immediately behind me, behind the sanctuary here, and even the Tepeyac Hill, honoring Our Lady of Guadalupe and St. Juan Diego, the museum that tells the story of who this remarkable figure, Blessed Stanley Rother, is, the visitor center, and that you will return often Today we gather to dedicate a church, a church that has been built to give honor and glory to God. Yes, we honor Blessed Stanley Rother here, but none of this ultimately is about Blessed Stanley. It's not about the beautiful art and architecture that speak so eloquently of God's goodness and mercy and beauty. We gather here to honor the God who created all of this and the God who is glorified in his saints. We honor Blessed Stanley because we are giving glory to God. The life of each and every saint in the history of the church, manifests something of the perfections of Christ, reveals God's beauty, God's truth, and God's goodness in unique ways in each of God's saints. We are all his handiwork. The dedication of a church reminds us of our own dignity as baptized men and women that we are temples of the Holy Spirit and that the church is God's dwelling place among us. Not this physical space, but the church, which is God, the people of God, the mystical body of Christ. God desires that each and every one of us becomes a saint. We dedicate this church today according to the rich and deeply evocative rites of our Catholic Church, which have been prepared for this liturgy of dedication. We will anoint the walls of this church as we just bless them with holy water. We will anoint these walls with sacred chrism just as each of us were anointed with chrism on the day of our baptism and confirmation. We consecrate an altar using the same sacred chrism, the altar on which the Paschal mystery will be renewed each and every day in the Holy Mass. It's customary 
for consecrated altars to contain relics of the saints, as this one will. But the principal relic of this shrine is in the adjoining chapel, containing the body of blessed Stanley Rother. We hope you will make time to visit and venerate his body and relics there. Blessed Stanley lived the mysteries that are celebrated on this altar. As a priest configured to Christ, the high priest and good shepherd, through his priestly ordination, Blessed Stanley allowed his life-giving death and resurrection in the mystery of baptism to be made manifest in his own self-offering for his people. The offering and sacrifice he renewed daily, not only in mass, but in his fidelity to the pastoral care of his people, even to the point of laying down his life. We need such priests, such good shepherds to make manifest the presence of Jesus in our midst. Blessed Stanley Rother is the first martyr from the United States to be recognized by the Catholic Church and the first U.S.-born diocesan priest to be beatified. And he's from Okarchi, Oklahoma. As Father Wolf said last night, if, if somebody from Okarchi, Oklahoma can be beatified, become a saint, then good golly, anybody can. <laughs> because that's the beauty of the man that the church honors in Blessed Stanley Rother. He was one of us, a very ordinary man, a hardworking man, a man of strong convictions, deep faith, but not born with a halo, as Father Wolf mentioned, and that those of you who knew him can testify, especially you, Sister Marita. <laughs> a good story must have a beginning, a middle, and an end. But as the Proverbs tell us, God writes straight with crooked lines. And so it is with the life of blessed Stanley Rother from Okarchi, Oklahoma. The basic lines of his life story we know well enough. But a storyteller has to choose a thread to pursue from the colorful tapestry of persons and events in telling his tale in an orderly way. And so we wonder, which shall we pursue amid so many possible approaches to the events that we've been celebrating and observing this week and all that has led up to these events? You may be aware, if you're from Oklahoma, that last week we marked 50 years since the Diocese of Oklahoma City and Tulsa, which sponsored the Oklahoma Catholic Mission in Guatemala, was divided into the Archdiocese of Oklahoma City and the Diocese of Tulsa, becoming a new ecclesiastical province along with the Diocese of Little Rock. Depending on our frame of reference, we tell the story of Blessed Stanley and the church in Oklahoma differently. Our perspective gives us an angle and an understanding and a frame of reference. When we tell the story of Blessed Stanley, we might focus on his upbringing on the farm, in the parish, his ordination here at Our Lady's Cathedral, after his considerable struggles and amazing perseverance in seminary. We might focus on his labors in the parish, in Durant, Oklahoma, or Tulsa, or here in Oklahoma City, or his missionary life 
in Guatemala, where he served the last 13 years of his life in the parish of St. James the Apostle, on the beautiful shores of Lake Atitlan, in the village of Santiago Atitlan. This is where Blessed Stanley ended his life, giving his life, dying for the Lord and his people. The church later declared him a martyr. Blessed Stanley Rother belongs to all of us, as does this shrine. He belongs to the universal church, as is illustrated in the mural above his tomb in the chapel behind me. I invite you again to go visit where he is being welcomed by the risen Lord into the glory of heaven, surrounded by the holy innocents and martyrs from every age and culture. Yet his life and ministry in a particular way, I would propose, is a gift to us who are priests, priests of Oklahoma, priests of Guatemala, because he's not only our first martyr, he's Guatemala's first martyr as well priest of the United States. He is given us by the Lord, do we priests in a particular way, for our encouragement and consolation and as an intercessor. At a time in which the priesthood of Jesus Christ is so little understood or so little valued, due in no small part, admittedly, to the sins of some of our brothers. We need heroic, faithful, generous witnesses to remind us of the dignity of our vocation and of the inestimable value of priestly ministry and the mission that we share as priests of Jesus Christ. Blessed Stanley is our special intercessor, not just for us priests, but for all of us, if we choose to approach him, and I hope we will. I hope we will bring him all of our needs, those of our families, our parishioners, and ask his heavenly intercessor in the presence of God, before the throne of Christ. Ask with confidence, ask with boldness, if you need a special favor, a healing, a miracle. Remember, so does Blessed Stanley. I've been asked often, what will it take for Blessed Stanley to become Saint Stanley? I say, well, it's gonna take a miracle. <laughs> and, and it will. That's the criterion, that's the standard. We learn from Blessed Stanley's life many important lessons. He was an ordinary guy, ordinary man from Okarchi, Oklahoma. But God chooses the ordinary. God chooses the weak to make them strong. He was a good shepherd. Long before Pope Francis, our Holy Father, coined the beautiful expression, Father Rother, or as he was known among his people in Guatemala, Padre Francisco, or Padre Aplas, had already taken on the smell of his sheep, learning the languages of his people. Not just a language, but the languages. This man who had been asked to leave seminary because he couldn't master ecclesiastical Latin, mastered Spanish. And a rather obscure and rare Mayan dialect called Sutuhil. I wish we could submit that as a miracle. <laughs> he entered deeply into the culture and the poverty of his people, tasting their fears and their insecurities in order to bring them Jesus Christ and to affirm their dignity. Despite his struggles in seminary, especially with language. 
he was willing to put out into the deep, allowing the Lord to use his considerable natural gifts and talents and to enhance them with spiritual gifts and charisms. What an inspiration and encouragement for each of us to help us to move beyond our own self-imposed and self-limiting comfort zones and fears to serve as we are needed, where we are needed, no matter the demands, no matter the cost, to be generous, indeed to be heroic, if that is what's called for. My friends, it is our responsibility. It's our privilege to work to make Blessed Stanley Rother, martyr, better known, to spread his cult, as we call it in the church, to increase devotion to him. And it shouldn't be hard. The more we know about his life, we find in Stanley Rother a very attractive figure, so relatable, a real everyman, ordinary, like us. Not just for priests, but for all of us, but in a particular way, I would say, for young men who dream about doing something impactful, I would dare say heroic with their lives. Become a priest. What a radical path. Seminarians from around the country have already begun to be drawn to Stanley Rother. For several years since his beatification, we've had a stream of seminarians from near and far who have come to his former place of rest at Resurrection Memorial Cemetery to pray at his tomb, asking his intercession to help them, to guide them in their vocational discernment and in the challenges of priestly formation. I want to take this occasion today of our Mass and to ask the Lord through the intercession of Blessed Stanley Rother to stir up a generous spirit within the Catholics of Oklahoma and far beyond, but especially our young men here in Oklahoma whom the Lord might be calling to the priesthood. We need, all of us need to foster and to encourage and to pray for vocations to the priesthood and encourage young men and seminarians by offering them the example of the heroic priest martyr who is blessed Stanley Francis Rother. Many of us are familiar with the book From Christendom to Apostolic Mission, which Monsignor Shea has helped make many people aware of in our country. Small book, but a profoundly important one. It describes well the conditions of our post-Christian age and society. We are no longer living, as the book points out, in what could be called a Christendom culture that supports faith and gospel values by its worldview and by its institutions. Stanley Rother lived in a Christendom culture in Okarchi, Oklahoma, when he was discerning priesthood in the 1950s. We no longer do. The age in which we are living is very much what we might call an apostolic age. That is, it is much like the hostile pagan world into which the apostles were sent after Pentecost. It will demand of us a certain measure of heroism and intentionality, a heroism that comes only from living out of a deep personal relationship with Jesus Christ and fidelity to the guidance and grace of the Holy Spirit, nourished by the Eucharist. Blessed Stanley Rother lived out his priesthood in a world that was increasingly confronting him with hostility. In the latter years of his priestly life and ministry in Guatemala, violence was raging around him. He was confronted 
by those who hated the church, who hated the gospel, who hated the principles that the church and the gospel embodied, the values it stood for, especially its concern for the poor and marginalized, the dignity of every person. When his life was threatened and he knew that death was imminent for him, he wrote back home to Oklahoma in his Christmas letter of 1980, famously declaring that the shepherd cannot run at the first sign of danger, and he chose to remain. My brothers and sisters, we must pray for one another because we too were living in precarious times. We might even say hostile times, hostile to some of the values that we represent, that we aspire to, the dignity of every person from conception to a natural death, the liberties that make a truly human life possible and livable, particularly our religious liberties. The world into which we are sent to go make disciples needs committed priests. It needs holy marriages and families. It needs dedicated lay leaders in the professions, in the trades, in business and in the arts and in public service to renew the culture with the light of the gospel, the fragrance of Christ, and the attractive beauty of holiness. We need faithful witnesses and fervent missionary disciples. Let us learn, let us study the example of our brother Blessed Stanley Rother, and confidently seek his intercession that we will be found faithful as he was faithful and ultimately be welcomed as he was welcomed into the company of the saints. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father for all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, the God of not made, consubstantial with the Father, through whom all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I can confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Dearly beloved, let us pray to God, the Almighty Father, who makes the hearts of the faithful into spiritual temples for himself. And may the supplication of the saints, our brothers and sisters, 
be joined with our voices. Let us kneel. Mother of God, pray for us. Saint Michael, pray for us. Holy angels of God, pray for us. Saint John the Baptist, pray for us. Saint Joseph, pray for us. Saint Peter and Saint Paul. Saint Andrew, pray for us. Saint John, pray for us. Saint Mary Magdalene, pray for us. Saint Stephen, pray for us. Saint Ignatius of Antioch, pray for us. Saint Lawrence, Saint Perpetua and Saint Felicity, pray for us. Saint Agnes, pray for us. Saint Gregory, pray for us. Saint Augustine, pray for us. Saint Athanasius, pray for us. Saint Basil, pray for us. Saint Martin. Saint Benedict, pray for us. Saint Francis and Saint Dominic, pray for us. Saint Francis Xavier, pray for us. Saint John Vianney, pray for us. Saint Catherine of Siena, pray for us. Saint Teresa of Jesus, pray for us. Saint George. Saint Charles Borromeo, pray for us. Saint John Chrysostom, pray for us. Saint Martin de Porres, pray for us. Blessed Stanley Rother, pray for us. All holy men and women, saints of God, pray for us. Lord, be merciful. Lord, deliver us, we pray. From all evil. Lord, deliver us, we pray. From every sin. Lord, deliver us, we pray. From everlasting death. Lord, by your incarnation, Lord, we us, we pray. by your death and resurrection, Lord, we us, we pray. by the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, Lord, we us, we pray. be merciful to us sinners, Lord, we ask you. Govern and protect your holy church. Lord, we ask you to hear our prayers. Keep the Pope and all the ordained in faithful service to your church. Lord, we ask you to hear our prayers. Bring all peoples together in peace and true harmony. Lord, we ask you to hear our prayers. Strengthen us and keep us in your holy service. Lord, we ask you to hear our prayer. Consecrate this church for your worship. Lord, we ask you to hear our prayer. Jesus, 
Son of the living God. Glory as you hear our prayer. Christ, hear us. Christ, hear us. Christ, graciously hear us. Christ, graciously hear us. Simply accept our petitions, we pray, O Lord, that through the intercession of the Blessed Virgin Mary and all the saints, so that this building, to be dedicated to your name, may be a house of salvation and grace, where the Christian people gathered as one will worship you in spirit and in truth and be built up in charity through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us of the saints are buried in peace, and their names will live for all eternity. in your tent and dwell on your holy mountain. St. George and St. John Chrysostom. O God, sanctifier and ruler of your church, it is right for us to celebrate your name in joyful proclamation. For today, your faithful people desire to dedicate to you solemnly and for all time this house of prayer, where they worship you devoutly, are instructed by the word, and are nourished by the sacraments. This house brings to light the mystery of the church, which Christ made holy by the shedding of his blood, so that he might present her to himself as a glorious bride, a virgin resplendent with the integrity of faith, a mother made fruitful by the power of the Spirit. Holy is the church, the chosen vine of the Lord, whose branches fill the whole world, 
and whose tendrils, born of the wood of the cross, reach upward to the kingdom of heaven. Blessed is the church, God's dwelling place with the human race, a holy temple built of living stones, standing upon the foundation of the apostles with Christ Jesus as its chief cornerstone. Exalted is the church, a city set high on a mountain for all to see, resplendent to every eye with the unfading light of the Lamb, and resounding with the sweet hymn of the saints. Therefore, O Lord, we beseech you, graciously pour forth from heaven your sanctifying power upon this church and upon this altar to make this forever a holy place, with a table always prepared for the sacrifice of Christ. Here may the flood of divine grace overwhelm human offenses, so that your children, Father, being dead to sin, may be reborn to heavenly life. Here may your faithful, gathered around the table of the altar, celebrate the memorial of the Paschal mystery and be refreshed by the banquet of Christ's word and his body. Here may the joyful offering of praise resound with human voices joined to the songs of angels. An unceasing prayer rise up to you for the salvation of the world. Here may the poor find mercy, the oppressed attain true freedom, and all people be clothed with the dignity of your children until they come exultant to the Jerusalem which is above. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. May the Lord, by his power, sanctify this altar and this house, by which our ministry, which by our ministry we anoint, so that as visible signs they may express the mystery of Christ and the church.
lovely is your dwelling place, O Lord of hosts. My soul is longing and yearning for the courts of the Lord. My heart and flesh cry out to the living God. Holy is the temple of the Lord. God's most God of Hasta el Gorion ha encontrado una casa, la golondrina un nido donde colocar sus polluelos, tus altares, Señor del Universo, Rey mío y Dios mío. Blessed are they who dwell in your house, forever singing your praise. Blessed the people whose strength is in you, whose heart is set on a pilgrim way. God of hosts, hear my prayer. Give ear, O God of Jacob. Turn your eyes, O God, our shield. Look on the face of your anointed. One day within your courts is better than a thousand elsewhere. The threshold of the house of my God I prefer to the dwellings of the wicked. Lovely is your dwelling place, O Lord of hosts. My soul is longing and yearning for the courts of the Lord. My heart and flesh cry out to the living God. Hasta el gorion ha encontrado una casa, la golondrina, un nido donde colocar sus polluelos, tus altares, Señor del Universo, Rey mío y Dios mío. Blessed are they who dwell in your house, forever singing your praise. Blessed the people whose strength is in you, whose heart is set on the pilgrim way.
Let our prayer, O Lord, like incense in your sight, rise. And as this house is filled with a pleasing fragrance, so let your church be fragrant with the aroma of Christ. from the hand of the angel. In the presence of the Lord, our of the I thank you, Lord, with all my heart. You have heard the words of my mouth. In the presence of the angels, I praise you. I bow down toward your holy temple. Gracias a tu nombre, por tu misericordia y tu lealtad, porque tu promesa supera tu fama. Cuando te invoque, me escuchaste, acreciste el valor en mi alma. Kings shall thank you, O Lord, when they hear the words of your mouth. They shall sing of the ways of the Lord, how great is the glory of the Lord. is high, yet he looks on the lowly, and the haughty he knows from afar. I thank you, Lord, with all my heart. You have heard the words of my mouth. In the presence of the angels, I praise you. I bow down toward your holy temple. Dare gracias a tu nombre, por tu misericordia y tu lealtad, porque tu promesa supera tu fama. Cuando te invoque, me escuchaste, acreciste el valor en mi alma. King 
kings shall thank you, O Lord, when they hear the words of your mouth. They shall sing of the ways of the Lord, how great is the glory of the Lord. The Lord is high, yet he looks on the lowly, and the haughty he knows from afar. Let the light of Christ shine brightly in the church, that all nations may attain the fullness of truth.
la celebración de la Eucaristía, llevaremos a cabo la colecta. Como se pueden imaginar, mantener este hermoso santuario será muy costoso y necesitamos su ayuda. La colecta del día de hoy será a beneficio de este santuario y para cubrir los gastos de operación de ahora en adelante. Para tener más información, para donar o para programar una donación recurrente, visite rothershrine.org o escanee el código QR en la parte de atrás del libro de la liturgia para donar usando una tarjeta de crédito o débito. Gracias. Now, as we prepare the altar for the celebration of the Eucharist, we will be taking up a collection. As you might, might imagine, maintaining this beautiful shrine will be quite costly, and we ask your help. Today's collection will be to benefit the ongoing operations of the shrine. To learn more, give, or set up a recurring contribution, please visit rothershrine.org. You can also scan the QR code on the back of the worship aid to give by credit or debit card. Thank you very much.
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the gifts of your joyful church be acceptable to you, O Lord, so that your people, gathering in this holy house, may come through these mysteries to everlasting salvation through Christ our Lord. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Father most holy, for you have made the whole world a temple of your glory, that your name might everywhere be extolled. Yet you allow us to consecrate to you apt places for the divine mysteries. And so we dedicate joyfully to your majesty this house of prayer built by human labor. Here is foreshadowed the mystery of the true temple. Here is prefigured the heavenly Jerusalem for you made the body of your Son, born of the tender virgin, the temple consecrated to you, in which the fullness of the Godhead might dwell. You also established the church as a holy city, built upon the foundation of the apostles, with Christ Jesus himself the chief cornerstone, a city to be built of chosen stones, given life by the Spirit and bonded by charity, where for endless ages you will be all in all, and the light of Christ will shine undimmed forever. Through him, O Lord, with all the angels and saints, we give you thanks, as in exaltation we acclaim. To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant, Francis, our Pope, me, your unworthy servant, and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants, and all gathered here, whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you this sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls in hope of health and well-being, and pay their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. In communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord, Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, 
Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmas and Damian, and all your saints, we ask that through their merits and prayers, in all things we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, O Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service and of these your servants, who in a spirit of faith have offered you this church in honor of blessed Stanley Rother and built it with tireless labor. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect, make it spiritual and acceptable, so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he, looked, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands and with eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed Passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as once you are pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer we ask you, almighty God, Command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, that and all who sleep in Christ a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who, with those sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, 
graciously grant some share in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord. Through, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord, you sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb.
Let us pray. Through these holy gifts we have received, O Lord, we pray. Instill in our minds an increase of your truth, so that we may constantly adore you in your holy temple and glory in your sight with all the saints. Through Christ our Lord.
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow down to the blessing. May God, the Lord of heaven and earth, who has gathered you today for the dedication of this church, make you abound in heavenly blessings. Amen. Amen. May God, who has willed that all his scattered children be gathered in his Son, grant that you become his temple and the dwelling place of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May you be made thoroughly clean so that God may dwell within you and you may possess with all the saints the inheritance of eternal happiness. Amen. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go in peace. Glorify God by your life.